What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to LTH. My name is Abe and in this video on how to set up a home lab, we're going to be talking about budgeting with the Budget Actual app, which is very similar to YNAB. This is a part of our series on how to set up a home lab and the prerequisite, if you are not following the series all the way through, you will need a reverse proxy like Nginx Proxy Manager to get encryption for this website to work. Actual is a enveloped budgeting methodology or system that allows you to budget. One thing that I like about it is it's self-hosted and it's super cheap. So you can actually sync this with your bank account for $15 per year. Something like YNAB is $15 per month, or this is more than 10 times more affordable. And it does the same thing using the same envelope methodology. I know we all want our spouses to hop off, but budgeting can be appropriate at times if you'd like to hurry and go straight to the install look at the timestamps down below but i'm going to explain real quick what actual is and then in further videos go into more detail on how to use actual to budget your home lab hobbies and your day-to-day -day life so this is the budget page of actual now you can see we have a budget category and a spent category you will budget some set amount of money into this category you have a balance of a hundred dollars as you buy things you will get transactions right and those transactions will show up in this page and you will go and you will grab this item and then you will put it into its category now that will minus right so if this transaction for instance is a payment of 53 dollars it will subtract $53 from whatever that category's budget is. So if we did food, we subtracted $100, our balance is zero. Zero is actually okay. We want there to be zero, right? We want to zero out all of our budget because it means we did not overspend, but we spent exactly or hopefully less than what was budgeted for the month. And then any money that's net positive will carry over to the next month. Now, when you get income, every dollar should have a job, right? So up here is money to budget. So if I go in here and I put like $500 into this category, we can see our budget went down $500, right? And now we have $500 available. The whole point is to also zero out this number because what you're doing is you're getting every dollar of income a job to go towards something. And now you can also put money into your savings category, right? So if you have extra money, you're like, well, I don't want to buy anything else for the month. You don't have to put it in your savings, right? And then you can also project your bills. Now what's awesome is you can start setting budgets to three months averages, right? So once you've used this for a couple months, you can start seeing what you paid per category on average. And that will give you an idea of, hey, I have enough money, or hey, I need to start spending less because I'm spending more than my income based on these average numbers over my previous three months of spending, right? And so uh, I'm gonna go into more details of how to use this, like I said, but essentially you also have some cool things like rules. Let's say every time your mortgage payment hits, you want that to automatically go into the category bills. So you could go in here and you could essentially create this account, Bank of America, link this schedule on this said date, whatever amount of money on the third of every month will go to there, right? Or it'll go towards this bill, or you'll create a new rule that it will go into a specific category, right? So you also don't have to log in every day to categorize all your transactions. It can do that for you with certain rules. Your one-off buys, you will have to categorize, but that also uh, makes it so you're more so going to the budget page to ensure that you are following your spending plan, okay? So let's start self-hosting this, right? So what I'm gonna do is go over to our Proxmox environment once again on our series of how to set up a home lab. I'm gonna create a container. I'm gonna name this uh, LTH Video Actual Budget. And I'm going to create a password for my uh, container. I'm going to grab Ubuntu server. I'm gonna just be a little bit on the safe side, increase my storage to 20 gigs. I'm gonna do two cores. Uh, 
memory, uh, I'm going to do 2048, a little bit more than 2 gigs, or is 2 gigs, sorry. Uh, I'm going to get my IP address over DHCP and click finish. Wait for this to set up and then it will be right here once the name appears, our container. And then we can start installing Docker, Docker Compose, and then our actual container to self-host this and then give it a SSL encryption uh, certificate so we can access the website, right? And so that's why you need to do that other video. If you are following this video but not our series, we are going to do root for the username because that is default. And then the password we created when we signed up. Now you can run this command. All the commands will be linked down below on our website, but this is essentially just installing or uninstalling any conflicting packages before installing Docker. And this command is installing Docker. And here in a second, we will get a yes or no option to continue installation. Uh, why, since it's capital, is the default install as you can see, or the default option as you can see. So we don't need to type Y. We would have to type N for no. We can just click enter for whatever capital letter is the option. That's the default it will go to. And then after that is installed, we are going to install uh, some of the Docker plugins that we need in order to make this work. Okay, and now we wanna test our install to make sure we get a hello response, and we do right here. So we know Docker was installed properly. We're gonna essentially do the same thing for Compose. We get a Compose version, and so we know everything's there. Now we need to create a Compose file for our parameters of our container to go in for actual. So we're gonna use the nano command to create a text file. And then within that text file, we are going to paste the parameters for our container. One of the things you can copy this because it'll always go out and grab the latest version of actual for you. And we're gonna do control X, the letter Y to save, and then enter to save under the compose YML name. And then we're gonna do docker compose D or up D and this will install and run the container in the background for us so we can still use our system. And then the other thing we need to do is grab the IP address of, of, the, of the machine with the following command. Sorry, I'm also writing this to my notes because I realized I left it off, IPA. All right, so one of the last things we wanna do is do IPA to get the IP address of our machine right here and click copy because we cannot go to this host. So if I go like this and I do 5006, we'll see a fatal error. We need a certificate to be able to access this site. So this is where our proxy comes into play. So we'll do test actual dot LTH learn dot duck DNS dot org. Enter, make sure you click enter or that won't work. And then this is at port 5006, enable web sockets, go to your SSL page, click the uh, force SSL certificate and use our wildcard and click save. And then we're just going to go to the website and we can see welcome to actual. So we'll put in a password here to be able to log in and then it's gonna ask us to sign in. And so you can do the demo if you want to mess with it and then you can open a new one or you can start fresh. I'll show you from the start fresh menu, we will click add account. You can then go and set up with Simplefin and go to Simplefin's website, get started, pay for it, create an account, as you can see, enter an email address and we'll send an email with a link to sign in or to sign up, it's essentially the same thing. And then that will import your data into here. And then once that's done, you'll be able to um, add accounts. So if you wanna add accounts manually though and not pay the $15 a year, you could do this and do like um, checking balance, sorry, 12123, click create. And then you would have to, you know, 
put in all your line items, so on and so forth. But I would really just go ahead, follow the process that Simplefin shows you, 15 bucks a year, get going, and then and further on videos, I will show you how to use this app even more. But one thing that I didn't feel like was very obvious I wanna show you before ending this video, is if you go here and you go to your My Finances, close file, you can actually create new budgeting sections for more people, right? So here's a unique one. So if you have multiple people, you or your spouse or your kids or people use different accounts, you can then have different sections for uh, different people. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I will go into more detail on how to use this app. I hope you guys find this useful and you're excited about this as I am because you can literally save more than 10 times the amount of money using this self-hosting than YNAB, for example. Thank you for watching. My name is Abe, signing off.